Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday of the third week of Easter. It's also the optional memorial of St. Joseph the Worker. This beautiful statue in our church is of St. Joseph the Worker. You will see the carpenter square in his hand. Today's feast draws a lot of attention to uh, our prayers for those who are in need of work to sustain themselves and their family. So in a particular way, we pray for all those out of work, and we pray for those who are underemployed. We ask God, through the intercession of St. Joseph the Worker, to help them find work that is suitable for them and to supply the necessary funds and needs for their own family. We also pray that they get a just wage so they could take care of themselves and those entrusted to their care. We go to the beautiful St. Joseph the Worker for that intention. Today, the first day of May, May 1st, the optional memorial of St. Joseph the Worker. Today at Mass, I alluded to the carpenter's house. When you think about it, and you think of that humble beginnings of the Holy Family, you think of the carpenter's house. Let's even face it, the manger itself gives a little hint into the life of this Holy Family. You know, I think about those things from time to time, the manger, the wood of the manger, to the wood of the cross, to the nails that held the manger together, and to the, of course, the nails that held our Lord upon the cross. I think of Joseph being there, being faithful, kind, and loving to Mary and Jesus. I think of his protection of them, especially at Bethlehem, and then his protection of them going to Egypt. That could have been a very scary time if you don't trust in God. I'm sure, humanly speaking, Joseph was a little nervous, but his fears were put to rest for his trust in God. So from Bethlehem to Egypt to Nazareth, what a beautiful protector, what a beautiful caregiver this St. Joseph the Worker is for them and for all of our needs. So do yourself a favor today. Remember this humble, just, and holy man, St. Joseph the Worker, and ask him in a very particular way to help all those who are out of work to find work suitable for them, and also making sure that they have a just wage to provide for those entrusted to their care. Also today, this beginning of May is a month dedicated to the Blessed Mother. Isn't May a wonderful time of year? Well, for us, it's a little strange, isn't it? The weather is not just perfectly May yet, and this pandemic and quarantine has us confined indoors a lot of time, unless we go out and get our walk in and do our necessary shopping for food. I think uh, we're all getting a little bit anxious and concerned, but we have each other and we have God. We have God with us. And all during the time of our Lord's upbringing, especially those early years, I think of the difficulty that Mary and Joseph had. I mean, let's face it, it wasn't easy for them. It wasn't easy at all. So when you go back and you think to yourself, they had to go to Bethlehem into that chaotic moment. It was chaos. And they went and Mary had our loving Savior in this manger, in this cave, in this setting that was a little frightening, like sometimes we feel during this time. I think we rely on the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph to help us when we're feeling a little bit closed in. And also, we go to them when we're fearful. Like I said, they had to take the child Jesus and go into the flight to Egypt. Because why? Herod wanted to kill the little baby. 
fact, he ordered anyone, any boy born two years and under would be slaughtered because of Herod's jealousy, the pride in him. It was so vicious that he wanted to make sure that no one took his place. Isn't that sad? Even during this pandemic, I think all of us need from time to time to appreciate each other's gifts and not to be jealous. God has given us all gifts and talents used to build up his body. What are your gifts and talents? Don't be jealous of anybody else's. Because God, God allows each proportion to be set forth into each individual person to build up his body. That's why St. Paul says, the arm cannot say, I don't need the leg. And the leg cannot say, I don't need the foot. And the foot cannot say, I don't need the ear. Everyone contributes to the building up, the building up of Christ's body, which is the church, you and me, right? We make the church, Christ the head and all of us the members. So I'm going to go back to the carpenter house. I like that image, and I like the image of our church here at St. Mary just being a wonderful carpenter's house. We have a lot of wood here, don't we? A lot of wood, and it, it reminds us of the carpenter's house. It reminds us also about the cross of Christ, doesn't it? We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Hmm. The holy cross that has redeemed the world. You know, sometimes, call me a little crazy, but I picture the baby Jesus on the carpenter's floor and just playing with the wood and getting two pieces of wood and making a cross. Could you imagine that scene? The little baby Jesus making, you know, maybe he doesn't know what he's doing, or maybe he does, and he's making a cross. And could you imagine Good St. Joseph looking down at his little boy, playing with the wood and the nails and seeing a cross in the hands of Jesus. And just beginning to understand that that is the way in which this boy, this little baby is going to save us. How beautiful. And the nails that are on the carpenter's floor, they would be Part of the instruments that will save you and me. Do you ever hear that saying, knock on wood? Where does that come from? You know, don't think of it automatically as a superstition. Some things are superstitious, I know, but some things are not. Knock on wood means to refer to the wood of the cross. So whenever you hear someone say, oh, knock on wood, Maybe you could say to them, oh yes, knock on wood and rely on that wood of the cross. Because that's, that wood of the cross saved you and me. That's a beautiful image that helps us. You know, it's like that 12 days of Christmas that we sing during the third Sunday of Advent. On the first day of Christmas. They have meaning. It's a meaning. It's a theology. It's a catechism. So when we do these things, it helps us to understand our faith, not on wood. Yes, the wood of the cross, not as a good luck charm, no, not as a good luck charm, but to rely on the wood of the cross because that wood saved us. The wood of the cross as our image of our Savior. Remember I said you have to have the image of the Savior on the cross. The wood is an instrument, but it's the Savior, the flesh, which is the hinge to salvation, <laughs> right? I'm gonna keep on going back to that for you. I'm going to keep on repeating some things so that it stays in your head. Yes, the wood of the cross has no meaning unless the flesh was upon it because it was the flesh that saved us and the instrument was the wood and the nails that gave us eternal life 
you ever get a splinter in your hand? Isn't that horrible? You're like, oh, and it pains you. I want you to think about something when that happens. If you remember, would you play it? Would you continue to say, we adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. That splinter would remind you of the pain and the agony, maybe just in a little way, but still the pain and the agony of our dear Savior. It's these little things that I think we should teach our children and our grandchildren. So when little Joey or little Susie comes up to you and says, I have a splinter in my hand, help me. And then he says, everything will be all right. And you sterilize the needle. I remember my mom getting a needle, getting a match, sterilizing the needle. And of course, I'm watching her like, what are you doing? And she's saying, I'm sterilizing the needle because it's going to go in your hand. And I said, okay. And then she would take my hand and she would comfort me and she would dig out the splinter. It's a good thing when you're consoling your child or grandchild to say, I, everything will be all right. Just remember what our Lord, what our Lord has done for you and me, that he endured the suffering of the cross. This is just a little reminder. It's a blessing for us to be reminded. Even though we're in pain, it helps us to remind ourselves about the day in which Christ suffered on the cross. I wonder if that little boy Jesus ever got a splinter working in the carpenter's house. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. And again, I'm going to go to our good St. Joseph the worker and say, boy, I could imagine St. Joseph bending down, wiping the tears off of Jesus' face and saying, it's all right, Jesus, let me help you. And taking the splinter out of his hand. Again, it's almost like, you know that cloud in cartoons that they're thinking? It's almost like they're both thinking of Calvary and eventually what would happen for the salvation of the world that this child would grow up and hang on the cross, die for your sins and my sins, and open the gates of heaven. Hmm. I do think about all these things because they have references. So like I said, today is the May 1st, the, the first day of May, dedicated to our Blessed Mother as well. So I think sometimes we have to understand that we can't just divorce even the persons of the Trinity? How about the Holy Family? I think they go together, don't they? I think Jesus, Mary, and Joseph go together. What do you think our, our Lord, his love for his mother and his love for his foster father as well, had a great love for them? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I also mentioned, can you see the medallion above the statue? The medallion of the Carpenter Square and the two lilies. I mentioned this at Mass. The two stem lilies, one as the foster father of Jesus and the other one as the spouse of Mary. And then in the center, do you see the Carpenter Square? Right there. That's a beautiful mural. It's very simple, like St. Joseph, isn't it? Very, very simple. Do you know what the, the, the lily stands for? Give me a couple minutes to think about it. The lily stands for the trumpet. The trumpet that announces the joy of Easter. It's also a sign of great purity and chastity. It's in the hands of Saint Joseph because he is that chaste spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And he's also the one, in a very special way, that opens his ears to receive God's word and to live it, to live it in the midst of the Holy Family. Saint Joseph is also the protector of the church. Do you know why? Because the humble beginnings of the church in Nazareth. Maybe that's why 
So many of us love this parish church. For many of you, it's the beginning of your spiritual life. For some people, they've been here from the very beginning. I know one parishioner who's celebrating her birthday today has known all of the pastors. Isn't that amazing? Father Beezer, father, followed by Father McCall, followed by Father Hedge, father, followed by Father Birosh, followed by Father Kelly, followed by Father Brennan, followed by Father McElroy, followed by Father Bellopedi. Eight pastors. So, happy birthday to you, Mary, uh, for celebrating your birthday today. But she told me, she says, Father, I knew all eight. And I, you know, you're the eighth one. I said, isn't that, isn't that beautiful? So our family here is a family of faith. And I pray that I can imitate St. Joseph the worker by making sure that I care and provide for my family of faith here at St. Mary's Parish. So we say, St. Joseph the worker, pray for us. Have a good day, everyone.